Let's talk about communicable infection caused by Group A Streptococcus. Group A beta hemolytic streptococcus or streptococcus pyogenes is clinically significant. Not only is it the most common cause for throat and skin infection on Earth, but also some strains continue their pathogenic effect even after infection. Here is the list of the objectives for this lecture. Analyze factors that put the client at risk for communicable infection caused by Group A streptococcus. Assess clinical manifestations associated with different infections caused by Group A streptococcus. Formulate an individualized nursing care plan according to the client's needs. Prioritize nursing interventions. Analyze client's needs and provide appropriate patient education. Group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, also known as streptococcus pyogenes, is a gram-positive cocci that appears in the shape of chains. It is the bacterium that we are most commonly exposed to in our daily life. It also is a major cause for different infections with various degrees of severity, from mild to life-threatening. Infections caused by Streptococcus pyogenes include pharyngitis, cellulitis, scarlet fever, impetigo, acute rheumatic fever, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, type 2 necrotizing fasciitis, and streptococcal toxic shock syndrome. In this lecture, we will focus on two most common communicable diseases caused by Streptococcus pyogenes, pharyngitis or strep throat, and pyodermal infection or impetigo. We will discuss scarlet fever in the next lecture. While pharyngitis or strep throat is more prevalent during late fall, winter, and spring, Pyodermal infection prefers a warmer season, summer. The most significant risk factors for transmitting streptococcal pyogenes is crowding, which increases opportunities for contacts. Therefore, school setting puts the children at risk for the infection because of high frequencies of close contacts. Additional risk factors for streptococcal pyodermal infection include age, compromised skin integrity, and environmental factor. Streptococcal pyodermal infection commonly affects children at age 2 to 5 years. Dermal damage increases risk for streptococcal impetigo. Therefore, activities that may lead to skin lesions such as wrestling and football put the client at higher risk comparing to other activities. Tropical and subtropical region is the environmental risk factor for streptococcal impetigo. Streptococcal pharyngitis, on the other hand, is more prevalent among children between age 5 and 15 years, while frequent and close contact increases risk for infection. Adults, including parents of school-aged children, and other adults in frequent contact with children are at increasing risk for strep throat. These two communicable diseases are transmitted from one person to another through direct contact. Yet strep throat is transmitted by touching the contaminated respiratory droplets, and impetigo is transmitted by touching the contaminated discharge from the skin lesion. Both infections are communicable during acute stage until 24 hours after initiating effective antibiotics. Streptococcal pyogenes can easily invade through intact skin and mucosa. Human is its natural host. Many healthy people are carriers. Once break through the physiological barrier, the group A beta hemolytic streptococci incubates for 2 to 5 days for pharyngeal infection and 7 to 10 days for dermal infection. Then, an acute onset of clinical symptoms manifest. For strep throat, patient experiences sore throat, difficulty swallowing, fever, swollen and tender cervical nodes, fatigue, headache, and abdominal symptoms. 
Physical examination shows swelling, beefy red pharynx, and tonsil with exudate, as well as petechiae on palate. The characteristic clinical manifestation of streptococcal impetigo is honey-colored crust over the skin lesions. If left untreated, significant sequelae such as scarlet fever, post-infection glomerulonephritis, and rheumatic fever might occur. Rapid antigen detection test is available for making medical diagnosis for strep throat. Positive reading guides the antibiotic therapy for streptococcal infection. However, following up with culture is necessary if negative reading is yielded from rapid antigen detection test. Culture from skin lesion is not clinically efficient. Therefore, there is no testing available for making medical diagnosis of streptococcal impetigo. Prompt treatment is important because of severe sequelae. Medical treatment includes the following. Prompt oral antibiotics with penicillin should be initiated as soon as possible. Amoxicillin is commonly prescribed. Should the child be allergic to penicillin, use clindamycin or oral microlids. Muparicin cream or retapamulin ointment is applied topically for impetigo in addition to oral antibiotics. While prevention is always the best treatment for infectious and communicable diseases, unfortunately, there is no prevention for pharyngitis or impetigo caused by streptococcus. However, prompt treatment with antibiotic for this infection prevent severe post-infection sequelae. Prognosis is usually good as long as antibiotics are used. However, 15% infected children become chronic carriers. Reinforce standard and droplet isolation for pharyngitis and contact isolation for impetigo until communicable period is passed. The patient should be kept isolated at home until the following criteria are met. A febrile without usage of antipyretic for 24 hours. 24 hours after initiating effective antibiotics. Administer medications as ordered. Antibiotics should be given at a consistent interval and full course should be completed. Penicillin is the choice of antibiotic. However, if the client is allergic to penicillin, oral macrolids or clindamycin can be used. We're going to talk about clindamycin here. Clindamycin is an effective antibiotic by prohibiting protein synthesis of the bacteria. Common adverse effects include esophageal irritation, nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain and diarrhea, mostly GI symptoms, and skin rash. The severe side effects include pseudomembranous colitis, thrombocytopenia, and transient leukocytopenia. The worst adverse effects associated with clindamycin is clostridium difficile associated diarrhea, which can be fatal. History intake of past antibiotic usage is particularly important to prevent this adverse effect. Also, we should know that C. difficile associated diarrhea may delay until two months after the therapy has completed. The other fatal side effect is anaphylactic reaction. Oral forms of clindamycin include capsule and suspension after reconstitution. Capsule should be given with a full glass of water to avoid esophageal irritation. Reconstituted oral suspension is stable in room temperature for two weeks. Do not refrigerate it. Otherwise, the solution would be thickened in refrigerator. Clindamycin is expressed into breast milk. Therefore, it is not recommended for nursing mothers. Teach the client on how to take oral antibiotics and how to properly store the suspension. Teach the patient and family on monitoring and report adverse effects, particularly diarrhea and hypersensitivity reactions. Mupiracin is the topical antibody ointment used for impetigo. Adverse effects include headache, rhinitis, irritation in nasal cavity, nausea, burning or tingling sensation at the topical site, 
pruritus, and rash. Teach the client and family on appropriate topical application. Wash the lesion, gently remove the crust, and pat dry. Then apply a thin layer of ointment over the skin lesion. Patient may decide to leave the lesion uncovered or covered. Teach the patient and family members to monitor and report adverse effects. Non-aspirin antipyretic is used for comfort and controlling fever. Encourage fluid intake. Promote bed rest during acute stage. Provide comfort measures. Warm soaked water for goggling may help alleviating discomfort at throat. Offering food that is soft and cool for easy swallowing. Avoid irritation to the throat. Avoid acidic beverage. In order to prevent recurrent infection, replace the toothbrush once the patient is recovered. Recommend throat swap for any family members who have sore throat. Teach the parents and patient to monitor signs and symptoms for worsening condition, including discolored urine output, palpitation, migrating pain over large joints, edema, shortness of breath, etc. Should any of these symptoms are noticed, report to the physician immediately. Thank you for taking this lecture.